Hello everyone, welcome to Biobase Transition class. This class was made by Gabriela Rocha Moreira, Maria Fernanda Sanchez Perez, and Ramsey Enrique Flores Gomez. Let's start. The content of this class contains background, what does the Biobase mean, why is it important to make the transition, and how is the impact of the transition. Nowadays, the world is moved by the petrochemical industry, or plastic, fuel, and even food are made by it. We have used at least 135 billion barrels of oil since 1870s. Moreover, 294 billion liters of CO2 were produced from the burn of these amounts of petrol. It is equal to 118 Olympic pools. One of the most common examples is the plastic production. Nowadays, the plastic use is produced by PET. This last one is a chemical compound called polyethylene tereftalate. It consists in a polymer set units of a monomer ethylene tereftalate with repeated molecules. In 2016, it was estimated that 56 million tons of PET are produced each year, and the problem of this is that it takes 450 years to be degraded. So, if you buy a bottle of water today, it will be degraded in 2469. It is almost 15 family generations. Even the recycle idea is not enough. Less than 90% of bottles aren't even recycled. All these bottles end up in the ocean or in the landfill. In the next graph, we can see the contribution of the chemical industry to the European Union economy. That is almost 65%. So, what should we do? Brainstorm! We need to focus on three main topics. Technical innovation, by using new existing technologies to develop new manufacturing processes in the industry to reduce the environmental impact. Sustainability, creating new products using renewable materials. And also profits, focusing on the competitive market, building materials, packaging and clothing. So you may be wondering, what is a bio-based product? Well, bio-based products are wholly or partially derivated from materials of biological origin, including materials built in biological formation or facilitated. Likewise, in industrial processes, for example, enzymes are used in the production of chemical building blocks, detergents, pulp and paper, textiles, etc. By using fermentation and biocatalysis instead of traditional chemical synthesis, higher process efficiency can be obtained, resulting in a decrease in energy, water consumption, and a reduction of toxic waste. As they are derivated from renewable raw materials such as plants, bio-based products can help to reduce CO2 emissions in the environment and offer another advantages, such as lower toxicity in the product content, for example, the bio-based plastic in packaging. So, why change to bio-based? Well, we need a transition. Some of the reasons to increase interest in bio-based products lay in their benefits in relation to the reduction of resources and climate change. Bio-based products will provide additional functionalities, less resource-intense production and efficient use of all natural resources. Nevertheless, Companies, government, and consumers are confronted with numerous uncertainties. This may limit new products and technologies from growing into full-scale commercial applications. But, how to make the transition? How to change to biobase? There are factors involved which operate at a variety of levels and are interconnected. Because of the dynamics of this situation, there are no click buttons to be pushed, allowing us to control developments directly. In the study report, a closer look to multi-level perspective, late management, you are examining which subjects should be studied in order to describe, interpret, and analyze the transition to a bio-based economy, to find points of departure which will allow people to control this transition. As a case study, they use the replacement of fossil fuels with biofuels in road vehicles. 
the first step to move to biophase is the society and the world thinking. The researchers study the transition process using Hill's multilevel perspective. This model was developed to study social changes which lead to the satisfaction of social need in an entirely new way. For example, if we continue with the first example we talked at the beginning of about the bioplastics, you will not only have different products and new technologies used to produce them, you will also be facing changes in terms of consumer legislation and regulations and habits. In this situation, you will need to encourage the consumers to follow the correct direction to be adjusted to a new product integrated into the market. The second factor to consider is companies' transition. To build competitive bio-based industries, suggestions include supporting the development of an eco-level for bio-based products, as well as the promotion of organic and low-input farming concepts and systems to maintain the consumer trust and confidence in bio-eco organic food product labeling. This should be extended to encouraging the use of sustainably sourced renewable resources and materials in bio-based industries. Companies also have to work in the improvement of the availability of sustainable and renewable raw materials in sufficient quantities and quality at a competitive prices. Renewable materials, governed by a clear and current legal framework, will encourage the industries such as forest or bioplastic bio industries. Moreover, trading partners should be encouraged to apply equivalent environmental standards. Until such a convergence is in place, the government should balance unfair competitive advantage of non-bio-based products in order to protect bio-based production. To stimulate the demand for innovative bio-based products, it is advisable to implement the recommendation developed by the current regulation for bio-based products. Also, special actions for growing startups are important in bio-based economy, for example, incentives, financial instruments, networking possibilities, research and innovation of mechanisms for technology transfer, access to flexible research-oriented pilot plans should be facilitated to enable companies to use pilot infrastructure during the research and development stage to test and refine industrial processes, reducing lead time and investment costs. The third factor to consider is government incentive. The problem of bio-based company is normally the product is more expensive because of the raw material and the technology use. Also, the people are more used to the conventional product and are difficult to make them go out from the comfort zone. Because of this and other points, the bio-based products are at disadvantage compared with the fossil products aspect. However, if the government incentive this economy to grow, they can compete in the market equally with the fossil fuel products. Actually, the government are interested in it. A further development of the bio-based economy is essential if the Dutch government is going to take the climate agreement seriously. In our Asian areas, biomass represented 50 to 60 percent of the total amount of renewable energy in 2030. A bio-based economy reduces the cost required to achieve the emission goals, says Van Meer from Vaginin UR. Therefore, it is a good scenario for both. The bio-based company, which the government can help with reducing taxes, loans to help to create new technologies, and on the other hand, the government to achieve their goal to help the environment. The fourth factor to take into consider is the transition from linear to circular economy. A linear company is a neutral company that we most see nowadays. Their economy starts with the raw material, then the production, the use, and it ends with a non-recycled waste. The produce of waste that is not recycled, for example, the pet, is a problem of this industry. It doesn't have a circular production line. It only has one straight line that it sends in the garbage. Therefore, the importance of setting real big steps towards a circular economy is increasing every day. It is clear that we need to leave the devastating linear economy behind. In a circular economy, the end is not in the garbage, 
it backs to be a raw material and then the processing start again. The circular economy focuses on preventing the use of new non-renewable resources and the production of waste. Both are important to maintain a world that remains livable. Biobased materials fits very well in this approach. The steps to change it from a linear to a circular economy are first to find a way to reduce waste. Second, analyze the cost of transition and the payback time. Third, equality. Other factors are also important and need to be analyzed and tested during the transition, but dimensional aspects are the more important. In the next image, we can see a comparison between how a linear economy works, how a reuse economy works, and how a circular economy, the one we want to achieve, is working. This is the end of the lesson. Thank you and we hope you have enjoyed the lesson.